Hi, everyone. I wanted to welcome you all to today's uh, um, Agile at Scale SIG. Um, we have a great presentation in the store that we'll be talking about in just a moment. But uh, as we always like to do, uh, we'd like to uh, kind of talk a little bit about uh, what makes it all possible for us to be here today, which is Agile Austin. And so um, our mission in Agile Austin, uh, we like to connect people and foster professional growth. And it's really about communication and collaboration. So looking forward to uh, extending that mission today. Uh, our board members' terms are uh, expiring at the end of this month, and we'll only have one change for our board uh, coming up this uh, new year. So next uh, month when we have this SIG, we'll have a new slide. Um, but uh, Max, Scott, myself, Angela, we're all staying on board with the organization. Uh, Steve Martin will be transitioning out, and we'll have a new uh, vice president. Uh, Lee Allison. So looking forward to having him on the board. Uh, I wanted to thank our sponsors for today. Um, I am going to paste their links in the chat. Uh, we always appreciate their uh, you patronizing them. So uh, please check them out. Uh, Retrospect is being our platinum sponsor and our silver sponsors, Admel Yora, Wellska, and 321 Gang. All right, and if you are inter interested in becoming a sponsor, you can send an email to contact at agileaustin.org and we'll be happy to get you sorted out. Um, and we also love our members. Uh, they also help um, sustain our organization on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, we have a Slack community dedicated to various Agile topics. And you can also vote on the board and uh, we'll probably have another conference upcoming in the next year or so. And uh, there will be special discounts available for that. So agileaustin.org for more information. We have a bunch of SIGs, uh, kind of a lull during the summer. We are uh, having a continuous program here at the Agile at Scale, but uh, some of our others are kind of taking a bit of a break over the summer, uh, either one month or more. And so, um, you know, you can check out our uh, meetup.com forward slash Agile Austin for more details on all the different SIGs that we have available. And uh, yep, we hope to also start up a product one pretty soon as well. Um, for this particular one, the Agile at Scale, uh, SIG meetup. Uh, Leland can join us today, but he started it back in 2016 and is still uh, my co-facilitator and co-lead. Um, and I joined on 2020. I'm also, of course, a Johnson CTO, so I wear multiple hats here, but still enjoy organizing this one and uh, doing it. A uh, few upcoming events. We do have an open slot in August, so feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in speaking. Um, in July, we'll have Ken France talking to us about the science of large-scale organizational change. That's live on Meetup. In September, uh, we'll have optimizing flow for your development value stream and with Peter Vollmer, and that'll be on Meetup uh, here pretty soon as well. Looking forward to those. For today, uh, we have Kim joining us. Uh, she's going to be talking about a key consideration for Agile at Scale. You can see her bio there. Uh, got a lot of great experience. She actually talked at our Agile Leaders SIG uh, a couple months ago, and you can check out the recording on our YouTube channel. Just Google Agile Austin uh, YouTube, and you can find our channel, and her um, video is one of our latest ones. So, um, just one quick wrap up note, uh, if you want to uh, chat with us or have any other topic ideas, our email addresses are there, leland.newsome at agileaustin.org or ben.rogers at agileaustin.org. Um, and with that, I am going to stop sharing and I'm going to pass everything over to Kim. So take it away, Kim. Thank you, Ben. And thanks everyone for coming during your lunch on a Friday in the summertime. So um, I'm Kim Shirello, and as Ben mentioned, I'm going to talk today about um, organizational evolution as a key consideration for Agile at scale. And so I'm going to share my screen real quick so we can 
hit the road running here. So can everyone see my screen? Oops. Thanks. Looks good. Yep. Now let me put it into presenter mode. Sorry about that. Let's see. Play from the start. There we go. So I found this great picture and I thought that's great because evolution is about spirals and um, it's colorful. So there we go with that. A little bit about me. Um, so I'm an independent uh, senior agile enterprise coach and trainer, also an executive and leadership coach and a facilitator and a conflict resolution consultant. So um, and for fun, I have some icons on the bottom. When I'm, I'm not at work, I love yoga and gardening, meditation, uh, swimming, improv comedy, and hiking in the Colorado mountains. So I do welcome you all to reach out to me, to connect for questions or whatnot. Um, so here's my Twitter and LinkedIn information as, as well. So who has, we're just jumping right in. Who has ever tried to explain um, Agile to someone and they look like this? I'm seeing some smiles and some giggles. This actually reminds me of actually a friend of mine. So that's why I put this picture in there. So um, actually I'm gonna have everyone go to Menti right now. Ben, if you could put the, the link and the code in um, the chat, that would be awesome. And I'll start sharing it. Um, just putting in some words or phrases of how you felt when someone actually uh, looked at you like that. I'm going to do a quick, um, I don't know if I switched the share. Um, yeah, I did. Okay, so this is on Menti right now. Um, oops, and it's at the wrong window. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, so we can have a quick word cloud on how did it feel when you're trying to explain Agile and someone's giving you this crazy look, like what are you saying? <laughs> See if some folks are jumping in. Yeah. Surprised, amused. <laughs> I would say for me, frustrated. <laughs> like I drank the Kool-Aid. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I know people are eating lunch, so maybe not joining in. But other people's are like, you know, like, yeah, that's like, why don't you get it? Right? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah, quizzical, deja vu. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're humoring you. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That sounds fake. Yeah. Great, great. So, <laughs> and definitely, and today we're going to talk about um uh sorry i'm pausing as i'm switching back to powerpoint here right we're going to talk about some of those things to help you understand why they're giving you those looks and how you can communicate with them to help them better understand what the benefits might be right and i'm going to pause here on this slide for a moment because just thinking about i me use myself as an example right when we all learn agile we're like this is so great <laughs> like we want to tell everybody um, and what I say is I love agile, right? This is my life's work and love it so much. I incorporate it into personal life. So I have a Kanban board at home for home life, um, with my partner, we do, um, uh, instead of a team agreement, we do a relationship agreement, um, great, great stuff and making things more fun. And we retrospective every week. So <laughs> it's the, it's the, um, how can we make things better and more fun? And with all of that said, if someone got their agile pom-poms and shook them in my face, I would say, get out of here, right? It's not fun. So today we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how, how can we um, meet them where they're at? And there we go. So the meet them where they're at, 
um, just quickly in the chat, who has heard of this phrase before? Meet them where they're at. It's a big consulting as well as agile coaching um, phrase. Anyone heard of this? The meet them where they're at? I'm seeing some thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, so so my concern with, with this phrase is that if we meet them where they're at, they're staying the same, right? They're not growing, they're not learning. So I, uh, so I add in, meet them where they're at and invite them to take the next small step forward. So why would I say invite them? Well, we don't wanna command and control anyone. We don't wanna demand. We know what it's like if someone is you know, demanding you to do something, your knee-jerk reaction is, don't tell me what to do, right? So it's an invitation. And why do we say small step? Because all change is stressful, even positive change, right? Think about planning your dream vacation, right? There's some stress of, am I going to forget to pack something? Am I going to get to the airport on time? right? Will my plane be delayed? Even though it's a positive, fun thing, I'm going on my dream vacation. So we want to make it small. And that's why we talk about um, inviting small experiments. Let's try something small, something new. And they might say, no, nope, they're not taking your invitation. I don't want to try that. Totally fine. How about trying this experiment instead or this experiment instead? So um, definitely I like to add the invite them to to take the next um, small step forward. But now you're probably thinking like, well, how do I know where they're at, right? And this is gets into the uh, organizational evolution factor that we're gonna talk about today. So everyone learns and grows and evolves, uh, even organizations. And um, a big part of today's talk is based on Frederick Lelou's book, Reinventing Organizations where he is applying um, spiral dynamics and integral theory, which is based for human evolution, he's basing that on organizational evolution. And you've probably heard a lot of um, agilists, agile coaches, agile leaders talk about this stuff. So what are, we, what are we talking about here today? So the evolutionary stages, I just said, based on spiral dynamics and integral theory. So Don Beck, uh, Christopher Cowan, and Ken Wilbur. We all have aspects of these stages, hence Ken's term of integral theory. The idea is to integrate your stages, right? And going to the last bullet here, organizations as a whole, divisions, departments, teams, individuals can all kind of hang out at one stage or another. So we want to choose how we interact with them by sussing out what stage they might be at. So I wanna be clear, I'm not saying we're diagnosing anyone. I'm not saying we're assessing anyone. I had a colleague say, so are you giving them like a 50 question assessment to figure out where they're at? <laughs> like, oh. We're gonna show in, in this presentation how you can um, discern where they might be and how we can better interact with them so that we can have a better workplace environment and more productive and fun. So with that, I'm going to flip to, and it's not, there we go, flip to the next slide here. So just to, to clear it up, most organizations, most corporations, whatever they are, are kind of hanging out at these stages. So four, five, and six, which is blue, orange, and green. And in particular, most agile organizations are um, at the uh, stage five or six, orange or green stages. Um, why we're mentioning it is green and orange stages are very different and probably the why that you're getting those weird looks sometimes from people as you're trying to share with them about agile, about agile um, at scale. So uh, one more thing I wanna point out real quick before we leave this is stage seven is where um, us as, as people, but also as organizations are evolving too, there are actually some uh, organizations that are at this stage seven, the teal stage. Um, examples, 
would be um, Agile Coaching Institute, think Lisa Atkins and Michael Spade, um, Management 3.0, uh, with Jorgen Apollo, Management 3.0 is Agile Leadership. And um, like Jorgen and his team, his company, um, they all sit down together and decide what their salaries should be and decide what promotions should be for each individual. They all agree. So it's a very teal level thing to do. Um, so just some, some ideas for the future. Um, sometimes uh, we all give talks on teal, so we all have that vision of where we could be going. So flipping, flipping to the next slide here, orange and green are very different. So that's why there could be some challenges with organizational change, in particular, scaling agile across the enterprise. So let's dig in a little bit to the orange stage, and then we will have some potential uh, time for Q&A here. So orange is based on achievement and, and it's results driven. So the metaphor for orange stage is a machine. That's why I have this picture here. Um, and if we had a bumper sticker, it would be win or lose, right? There's winners and losers. And at orange stage, we wanna be the winners. So very competitive. Some examples is actually most of the companies in the last 200 years are um, functioning at this orange stage. What does that look like? What do they value? Predict and plan. It's data-driven. It's evidence-based. Freedom and autonomy. Uh, initiative and risk-taking. Being rational, being pragmatic, um, based on materialism. It's individual-centric and organization-centric and um, very focused on competition. So all of these things are great things. We incorporate them as uh, in the green level um, stage as well. Um, and each of these stages have a shadow side. So a shadow side of orange would be taking it to the extreme, all these values would lead to greed and corruption, right? Which is not the... the healthiest way to be functioning at the orange stage. So before we have some questions, I know you're probably like, I'm drinking from a fire hose here. I know. Um, these are things that are like, you know, could be multiple day classes, right? So I'm going to show green, green as well, and then do a little comparison. And we'll see how, how everyone is feeling about all this. So green is pluralistic and relationship driven right versus orange is results driven and the metaphor for green is a family so so i have that picture here of um, the rainbow colored family the bumper sticker here would be sensitive or indifferent so sensitive doesn't mean like being too sensitive and you hurt my feelings sensitive is meaning that we're considering all perspectives whether it's by culture whether it's by different organizations whether it's by by gender or sexual orientation or customer versus supplier versus stakeholder versus leadership versus team level. We're taking everything in. So we're being sensitive to the fact that there's different perspectives. Examples, I would say companies in the last 50 to 100 years, examples Southwest or Ben and Jerry's, um, you all might be working at some of those uh, some green stage companies as well. As we go along this description, it might become clear. So what, what does green value? Equality, consensus, multiple perspectives, empowerment, decentralized decision-making. It's values-driven. Um, it has an inspirational purpose. So for example, Southwest Airlines, they don't just say, well, we're just, we fly people places, right? Their inspirational purpose is we give people freedom and they emphasize the freedom, freedom to go travel and explore places they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford, right? Because there are lower cost airlines. So it's, it's the inspirational purpose of why we exist as a company. They care about civil rights and environmentalism and they're world centric. Green also has a shadow side. 
And that is, uh, and there's, there's probably multiple shadow sides for all stages. I'm just keying on some of the high level ones. Um, one is taking a long time to reach consensus. They want agreement with everybody. And if, uh, so the antidote to this is knowing good consensus tools. So I'll give you all a quick example. Um, the uh, liberatingstructures.com has a lot of great exercises on there. And one of them is called one, two, four, all. And that's a great way to get consensus in a small group, but also used a lot in um, big room planning, PI planning, quarterly planning. When you have 100, 200 people in the room, it helps to bring consensus quickly, like we're talking within a half an hour to an hour or less. Um, so there's different tools out there that can help with this. So I know this is a lot and sometimes it's easier to see it side by side. So I'm gonna go down a list here organizationally, how orange and green um, compare and contrast here. And are there some questions in the chat, Ben, that I'm missing? Just taking a breath. Um yeah, not really questions, uh, just kind of some uh, like oh. Starbucks was mentioned um, for, I think, the green, you know, more of a green organization. Um, and Fred also put in the chat that uh, 35 is good to to help the group drive consensus around prioritization. Oh, cool. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, there's a lot of organizations that can, um, yeah, that can be be a green, and it's not a light switch either, right? It could be some parts of the organization we're talking about, the organization, the team, the department, they all can be different places, right? And usually the teams are at green before the organization at a whole is green because teams shift faster, organizations are bigger things and they take longer for any kind of change, right? So um, here we go, whoops, let me, Back that up. So we have here, moving my, there we go. Um, so the business focus for orange stage is responsibility to the stakeholders. The, the business focus for green is responsibility to stakeholders plus leadership, plus employees, plus customers, suppliers, local communities, society at large, and the environment. So their, again, that their relationship-driven focus comes out this way. So the company values, like, you know, um, usually they're listed on the website for Orange Stage and not known by most employees, whereas company values for Green Stage, right, their values-driven culture um, is known by all and embodied by all. So um, I always say to folks uh, who are saying, Kim, you know, I'm interviewing and I really want to work for a green company. Um, how do I know what they are? And I say, well, when you're interviewing, ask the interviewer or interviewers, what are the company values? Please make sure you know them ahead of time too. Um, if they can rattle them off, most likely they're a green company because they are living them and they'll probably start explaining about, oh, we, we show our respect this way. We show our value of this in this way. Whereas in orange, they'll be like, um, let me look it up on our website. I know it's somewhere, right? Or I know this is one of the values, but I think there's seven, <laughs> something like that. Um, it's not bad or wrong. It's what they're focused on, right? Just like we talk in the manif Agile Manifesto, right? We value the things on the left more than the right. Orange stage values things for orange stage more. Green stage values things for green stage more, but there's value. Um, they care about both sides though. Does, does that make sense? We're not being able to see people. <laughs> All right, for leadership, I have four examples here because I think this will help clear it out more. And these are from Lelou's book. So I want to give um, give him credit. Uh, so for leadership and orange stage, to a certain degree, they don't care how objectives are met as long as they're met, 
which can lead to things like overtime, people being heroes and saving the day, um, and that kind of thing. Whereas in um, the green stage, leaders uh, know that objectives are met by being a servant leader, which means empowering and motivating and developing employees. Again, they both have some semblance of these in, in both levels. It's what they're, what they're valuing more, right? The second thing for leadership uh, in orange stage, unwilling to let go of control so decisions are made higher up in the organization. Whereas in the green stage, um, they trust the team to make the right decisions about their work, right? About their own individual work. Are they asking the teams to run the company? No, right? They don't have the skills or experience to be a CEO, but they're asking them to give input on things that they're interacting with, right? Two more. Uh, so three, leadership uh, for orange stage imposes higher tar targets in, hope, in hopes of meeting the stakeholders' expectations, which are lower. And the employees have no choice but to accept these targets. Who's experienced that in their life? Um, I have a lot of time. Right? Um, yeah, you can post in the chat if you'd like as well. It's, um, you know, they're asking for the world because they're hoping to get something less than. Um, and we know that doesn't usually work. Uh, in the green stage, uh, the leadership encourages frank discussions on what is feasible and what is not for objectives, right? Because the teams doing the work have a better idea of what they are. And please note, I didn't clarify. So let me do that now, right? Organizational evolution happens whether you're agile or not. <laughs> so all of these things are things that um, agile has kind of taken under the agile umbrella saying like, oh, that's a great idea. So there's a lot of other companies that might not practice Agile, but are following like, oh, they're more at this orange stage. They're more at this green stage, um, just to clarify that. Okay, so the last one on leadership here is, um, you've probably heard a big uh, orange stage thing is, leave your problems, leave your emotions at home, focus on work at work. And how well does that work? <laughs> um, <laughs> In, uh, in the area of psychology, they know that's impossible, right? Um, but they, they want you to focus on work, right? It's results driven, it's achievement driven. Please don't, please don't do that. Whereas with um, the green stage, they care about the well being of employees, knowing that this will lead to higher quality and innovative products. So just to be clear, we're not saying that orange stage people do not care about other people, that orange stage leaders do not care about other people. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is they value the achievement, getting the work done, and feel that, yes, they care about people, but that sh they feel that shouldn't impact your work. Does that make sense? It's what, what's, what they're um, waiting more. And I have one more here that I keep forgetting to talk about. Um, this is great and, and more practical for folks is um, the hiring focus. So in interviews, they're mostly based on skill and achievements for orange interviews, right? What certifications do you have? Um, what trainings have you taken? Those types of things. Whereas in the, whoops, it's not, there we go. In the green stage, it's mostly based on mindset and behavior. So you have more behavioral interviews. Um, um, a great example is they usually ask a question like, explain, uh, share a time where you, you made a mistake or you failed at work, what did you do? All right, they wanna see how you're handling things. Um, and I'm gonna use Rally Software in Boulder as an example. I know they're not Rally anymore, but when they were rally, I had a friend of mine who was a, a developer, a Rails developer, and she wanted to work for Rally. And she, but Rally's a Java-based um, app, 
So um, they interviewed her knowing that she was very straightforward with, um, that's not my expertise. Uh, so they did a lot of behavioral interviews. They did still do the technical part um, just in rails for her, uh, but they were looking for the culture fit and she was a great culture fit. So they hired her because in their mindset, we can teach anyone skills. We can't teach them culture, right? We can't teach them behavioral things. Um, so that's that's a, uh, an example of, of green there. And I'm checking real quick. I think I wanted to do. And we did have a question from the chat. Uh, Ahmad asks if we can please see the whole scale of organizations again. Oh, so go back. Yeah. I think it, it, I'm going to have to like step step back through. <laughs> Sorry. I'm um, not a PowerPoint expert. Is this the one you were talking about? Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> so Sorry for that. But You're welcome. You can do a, a quick screenshot. Um, thank you. I think you can find this picture online as well. Um, and of course, we're gonna have a PDF as well as the YouTube, so you can uh, you can rewatch. So I apologize. I'm gonna go through this way to come back. Um, so now I'd love us to jump back to Menti right now. I'm sure your brains are a little overfull and we're trying to like process and integrate. So we're gonna do some questions real quick. Um, Ben, I can't see the chat. If you can put the Menti back in there, I'm going to switch over to the Menti if I can find it. Yep, just put that back in the chat. Hopefully this is it, or you might be seeing my workspace. Nope. Oh, good. All right, so let me advance to the next slide. What Now, now that we kind of have this high level of what orange stage and green stage is, what does your organization seem to be like as a whole, like the, the company, the corporation, the government organization, whatnot? So if you want to vote real quick, um, I'd, I'd say, where is it leaning more? Is it leaning more to orange? Is it leaning more into green? Um, or is it other? It could be maybe the stage before orange, which is amber, like they don't even want to talk about agile yet. Um, amber could be like, some military, some government organizations, public schools, things like that. Um, you might be one of the few lucky ones to be in something like Patagonia or something like that, which is more of a teal level organization. So you might might be an other. I'm seeing some green stages, that's nice. No orange, that's interesting. That's the majority of companies out there. <laughs> um, yeah, for the person who put other, I'm curious what the other is about, whether you want to come off mute or write in the chat. Is it that you're feeling there maybe prior to orange stage or post green stage? Saying some in the chat too, more green. Yeah. Oh, nice. Move from orange to green. Cool. Yeah. So it's taking time to reflect where's the company as a whole. So when I'm interacting maybe with executive leadership, I'm knowing, hey, they're probably more green. They're more, probably more orange. Here's how to share with them different mm, agile scaling things, <laughs> concepts. Okay, so the next one to, to reflect on is what does your boss seem to be like? More orange, more green, something else. Hmm. Not as much voting on this one. I'm not seeing any chat either. <laughs> the numbers are updating, but the uh, little blue dots aren't moving across. Oh, 
Do you think maybe I need to, if I refresh? I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing any. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so again, these are things to think about, right? Um, a, a green stage boss would probably say like, hey, how are things going at home? I know you're really interested in learning guitar. How are your lessons going? <laughs> things like that. Where a green, uh, an orange uh, stage boss would be like, hey, how's, how's the deadline coming along? And the green does care about the deadline and we'll ask about it, but the orange is, is probably not gonna talk more about um, about that. So uh, yeah, it's different things to think about. Oops, and now my screen is refreshing. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, I'm really curious about the others. Anyone wanna jump off, off mute or um, talk in the chat why you chose other for your boss? I, I just uh, write greener in the chat. Oh, cool. I, type, I was the one, yeah, who choose, uh, who pick other. I mean, yep. my leader is, yeah, I think the words cannot describe. I think I have met this leader very, very uh, recently. Uh, but yeah, I think one of the best leaders I think I, I've met in my career. So nice. she exhibits exactly everything what... Uh, I think I, I I kind of have struggles in the past with some of the leaders that I work with and try to get them to have at least create ground to have those conversations. And this leader, I the leader actually is telling me and I am just, <laughs> uh, I am speechless actually. The leader is telling me exactly what she thinks of how can we, you know, what, what are the things uh, we need to do as leaders. So yep. yeah, leading by example, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's the servant leadership of green, definitely. And I can hear it in your voice. It's like, oh, it's the leader I've been looking for. A lot of people like, like, okay, you're seeing the whole me, right? And letting me know where I'm at and help helping, right? To empower me, to mentor me on the path forward. Definitely, definitely. And one last one real quick, this will go faster. What does your team seem to be like, right? Individuals are different, but the team as a whole, how are they kind of functioning? More orange, more green? Yeah, so we got some, I mean, it, I expected, right, to see more orange and green because agile companies are either orange or green, <laughs> which is why I didn't put some of the other ones on here. But um, yeah, so taking time to reflect, where's this team at? Therefore, how would I wanna present? And now we're gonna go into, let me um, share back to PowerPoint here and um, go on to, oops, I gotta give it focus. Here's an easy example, a simple example, maybe. Um, my email signature line, I actually have one for orange and one for green. Um, organizations. So my orange one here, you'll see, it has everything I shared with you at the beginning, being a coach and a leadership coach and a um, conflict resolution consultant. Oh, I don't have the facilitator on there. Uh, anyhow, but it has the whole alphabet soup of my certifications, right? Because orange is, it, it weights that more heavily. What certifications do you have? Whereas on the green side, I don't list the certifications because um, green comes from, yes, you can have certifications, but I really want to know about, can you apply what you learned, right? Have you had experience, right? I've done over 15 transformations. I've stopped counting <laughs> in the last 10 plus years um, with different, um, it, different corp companies, different government organizations across industries, right? That means something more. Uh, they weight that a little bit more. Do they look and see on my LinkedIn that I have these certifications? Yes. Um, it's just what they wait more. So with that, 
I'm going to go to a like more interactive example here. We're going to do a leadership example and a team example. So I'll invite people to come off mute or type in the chat. So here's our first, uh, oh, before I do to the first situation, um, at the bottom here, and I put stars around it, just remembering, and I just can't emphasize this enough, both orange and green care about both sides of the chart. They just value their side more, right? It's, it's where they're coming from and how you can communicate with them. So leadership. So if we're, if we're as, a, as an agilist wanting to explain to leadership, it could be your manager, it could be the CEO of the company and anywhere in between, trying to help them understand sustainable pace. So we're gonna tell them one negative effect of an unsustainable pace. And that one negative effect is more employees are sick from, uh, from overwork and from constant overtime. So if you were gonna explain this to an orange stage leader, of the why, like why should they care about this unsustainable pace? This is how we've been working for 20 years, right? Um, everyone needs to understand their salary. So they need to do overtime and um, we need to get, get the work done. We need to, you know, make revenue profits. We, we're beholding to, this, to the shareholders, to the stakeholders. So why should I care about this as an arm stage leader? Um, you could potentially make the argument that overwork would impact the 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 overall quality of um, what it is we're working on. Um, it might impact the timelines, you know, in the sense that um, if we're overworking people, and um, well, you you uh, you say here more employees are, are probably going to get more prone to getting sick, right? Um, that might impact the capacity of the teams. Um, so this is about how this is going to impact uh, the timelines and the quality from a stakeholder's point of view, right? Yeah, yeah. So quality can go down. Um, we could risk um, meeting our deadlines because people are out sick. Things like that. Definitely. Definitely. And I'll, I'll put here some ideas as well. The other thing companies are concerned about is when companies provide insurance to employees, companies are paying part of that insurance cost. So the more you go to the doctor and, and you're using the insurance and doing your copay, the more the company needs to pay the insurance company their side of it. So they are watching those things as well. So they're concerned with those facts and figures, right? Um, and the deadlines and whatnot. Green side, a uh, green stage is concerned with these things, but what would what would you say to a green stage leader about helping them understand this one negative effect of unsustainable place? More employees are sick from overwork um, and the constant overtime. I think one of the approaches that I would try is to bring information to the leaders through the lens that they seem to understand their company. So bringing facts and figures to the orange side, but bringing maybe real people examples of how it affects their, their employees, their suppliers, their the whole line around what's happening and presenting it through different lenses, depending on what's going to be more impactful for that leader. Definitely, definitely. That's the meet them where they're at, right? And invite them to take the next small step forward. And um, yeah, definitely the the green stage folks are, cons right? Green is more relational based and relational focused. So they would be concerned that morale is gonna go down, the overall health is gonna go down and they realize one, they care. And, and I'm not saying orange, orange stage leaders do care about people. They're, they're not heartless. Um, it's wh what they're waiting, right? In green stage, they understand that morale going down and overall health going down. Now everything that's listed in the green stage is going to go down, right? Now they're going to have missed deadlines and whatnot. Um, so let me, let me focus on that. Uh, so good point. And I'm sorry, I couldn't see in my window who was talking, but it was a great point you made. <laughs> Thank you. That was Kara. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> um, so the next example is team um, at a team level, right? So whether you're a scrum master, whether you're just a team member, whether you're a team level coach, 
um, trying to explain to the team the benefits of collaborating. And I'm going to give I'm going to give two two ideas here. So let's start with the first one is, OK, one of the benefits of collaboration is you can learn from coworkers. Why would an orange stage team member like myself care? Just real quick, Kim, 15 minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. This is Kara again. Um, so I'm coming from a background in education. I'm a middle school teacher. I'm moving into the agile field, but we talk with our students a lot about how that collaboration is where innovation happens and being able to present that to an orange leader through the lens of um, creating something with a higher value product because they're the team that's innovating. Yeah, yeah. And and here I'm talking about, and, and with time, I think I'll just start sharing, um, is so as a team member, why do I care if I'm an orange stage person, why do I care about collaborating? So if I'm learning from coworkers, I potentially can get raises and be promoted more quickly, right? Because I'm going to be learning more skills, right? The achievement aspect of it is what um, an orange stage person would care about. Whereas kind of like what Cara just said, a green stage person is, oh, okay, we're going to get more skills and more uh, cross functionality so we can work better together. We can get more done. So, right, we really focusing on um, that um, wanting to get product out more quickly versus what's in it, right? The what's in it for me, W-W-I-F. W-I-I-F-M, <laughs> right? What's in it for me, right? So um, if you start talking about, oh, we're gonna be more innovative to an orange team member, they're gonna like, yeah, nope, not gonna do the collaboration. <laughs> what's in it for me? So thinking about that is super helpful. Um, getting, you know, um, collaboration can promote Work is released to production more quickly. Orange folks, what they'll care about as a at a team level is, oh, I can get high level high level visibility. I can get praise from leadership. I can get um, better markings on my performance appraisals. Um, the stakeholder satisfaction could lead to potential bonuses, right? Of like, hey, we got this to market when the stakeholder wanted, and now as a as a bonus, leadership is going to give us. As a bonus, leadership is going to give us bonuses, right? Whereas we're getting released to production more quickly, a uh, green stage team member was like, oh, good, right? Green stage is looking at relational, even with the customers. Oh, we're, we're doing ben better benefit to the customers. And we're going to get more feedback from the customers so we can more quickly inspect and adapt and make this a product that everyone loves, right? There's a lot of inspiration and pride in the, we want them to really like it, not just use it, if that makes sense. And again, both, both orange and green care about both sides. One is weighted more than the other. So now we know one way to meet them where they're at. Are there more? And I say, yes, yes, yes. So uh, some factors to consider uh, I'm going to use as an example my talk to the leadership SIG in May, five valuable tools for agile leadership. The first tool is organizational uh, evolution. So you can watch that to get some more ideas on other things um, that can help you meet them where they're at and invite them to take that next small step forward. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll wrap it. Again, I welcome uh, folks connecting, um, asking questions, whatnot, please reach out on Twitter or LinkedIn. And as a final example, this is Lalou's book again. And the link I have here is from his website, reinventingorganizations.com. And if you see in the link, it says pay what feels right. So this is a teal stage thing that he's doing. So for his ebook, he allows you to buy it and you choose how much you would like to pay for it. Um, of course, you can buy the book and the audio at, at other places as well, but this is a great teal example. And before we end, I'm gonna be giving this talk again. So I would really love it 
And it really helped me if you're interested in, again, um, going to Menti. And um, Ben, if you could drop the link in there real quick. Uh, this is from training from the back of the room. So it's a, a kind of retrospective where the wows are what went well and the how abouts are what would make it even better. So um, I'd love if you put some ideas there and it'll all be anonymous. And um, with that, I will turn it over to some Q&A and I will stop sharing. So thank you everyone. I know this was like kind of drinking from the fire hose. So. <laughs> hey, real quick, Kim, on Menti, I'm still seeing, uh, please wait for the presenter to show the next slide. Oh, uh -oh. there. That's, that's probably me. Um, hang on, gotta find that window. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, everyone. I'm juggling. Okay. Yeah, that looks good now. Thanks. Yeah. So if, if people want to put questions in the chat or shout out, I'm flipping over to chat real quick to see if I missed questions. Uh, I did actually have a question myself. Um, the I really like the you know the breakdown between the two types of organization, and I've worked I would say mostly in green organizations, um, but one point of tension I would say is the use of the OKR framework. And the OKR framework typically recommends you achieve seventy percent of your goal, and in most cases that declares success. Have you seen that similar tension in organizations you've worked with? Um, help, help me understand. So are you saying that the tension of whether or not to use OKRs? Tension of achievement of success. In other words, 70% mm -hmm. of, of, you know, stretching yourself uh, means that you've achieved the goal, but you didn't necessarily achieve that other 30%. And the tension lies in what that definition of the 70% looks like and whether or not it was achieved. Because the definition I saw in the green slide you had uh, was kind of more along the lines of you have that collaborative nature, you set that goal, and it seemed like more of a 100% achievement there. Oh, um, thank you for, for that. And I apologize, that was not the intent there. Um, in the green stages, they're they're not looking at at meeting 100%. They, they'll, you know, couch things more of that experiment, the hypothesis, like, well, here's where we'd like to go. And, and with that, um, there's many different approaches uh, in that I've seen in green. Um, so it's not putting numbers on it, per se, unless it's a number thing, right? We want to have um, an, an increase of 20% you know, customer buying our app or something like that, right? Um, and, but they put a lot of information around when would we pull the plug on this experiment? Like, hey, we tried this to get the 20% increase in, in, in customers signing up and it doesn't seem to be working. So let's stop that. What else can we do for that, right? So there's the check-in points of we're gonna, they have agreement on how long are we going to, um, try this particular approach to get this result. We think we'll get, it's a hypothesis, we'll think we'll get this result. And we should, we feel we'll start seeing some indications of that in one month or in one quarter or one week, if you're a gaming app, <laughs> um, right? Uh, and if we're not seeing motion forward, then it's um, maybe we need to do something else to get there maybe we need to modify this approach. So it's very iterative uh, versus we have to get here and this is how we're going and we're gonna push that river upstream, right? <laughs> Which might be a little bit more on, on the orange stage side, right? Of this is the way to do it and let's you know full force ahead, everyone make this happen. Did that answer your question, Ben? Yeah, that's great, thanks. So I think Fred had his hand up first. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Good. Thank you. Um, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about like how have you actually applied some of this stuff? Because some of it's pretty 
pretty theoretical and I can see like outlines of orange and red, orange and green and figure out like how I've had discussions of everything, but like various ways to move. But like, I guess like, have you used this in practice and like, like how, how do you go about applying this? You say you just don't go around scorecard everybody saying you're teal, you're orange, you're, you're blue, like you're amber, like what? I'd like to love more, love to know more like that. So first I want to say just a reminder, if someone is green or orange, it's where they're hanging out, right? So they could have a, an orange person, uh, a, someone hanging out at orange might have some green aspects to them. And also if they're having, you know, a bad day or stress or lack of sleep, they could be hanging out at amber, which is the stage below it. Or like myself, <laughs> me as an example, um, I was part of the Marshall wildfire evacuation a year and a half ago in Boulder County. At that point, I was at stage one, right? Food, clothing, shelter. I'm being evacuated from my house. Um, I need to figure that out immediately as well as my safety. <laughs> so we can be focusing on all different levels. So for you, for an example, so I'm, you know, an agile enterprise transformation coach. My examples would be, I could do at all levels of the organization, what, what specific might, might be worthwhile for you? Like what is it team level, program level, convincing them to go agile, convincing them to scale? What's the scenario? Well, I mean, I'm in an organization where we are uh, evolving. And so trying to come up with a, with a, with a road, with a plan or like a, uh, not a time-based roadmap roadmap but like how do i get us to like where the executive team wants us to go and it seems like mindset is you know is a part of that so like when you've applied this like in an organization during a transformation like how have you how have you used it like like how have you used it is it something that's always in the back of your head during conversations or do you just like okay you you make a analysis of the past 30 days for each of these different department areas and say this is where they're kind of at and and help them with their individual plans like just how do you put this into practice hmm. yeah so good question so yes i do use it it's always in the back of my head uh, as well as the other tools from the the talk i gave to the leadership sig, sig. um do i tell them oh you're orange <laughs> or oh you're green <laughs> I would never do that. No, right. I'm just saying, like, right. how would you, the so coach, use it? Just, just, just clarifying. So usually, right, the the executive levels are usually more orange or maybe even amber, um, which we didn't talk about today, but um, this is the stage before. Um, so I'm meeting them where they're at. So if I'm if I'm feeling like that the program level um, could benefit. Uh, so that's meaning the if we're talking safe, the release trains, that they could benefit from having ag some agile training or reboot training, having some scrum master and product owner training, things like that. I'm going to talk to leadership in terms, and the leadership is more in the orange stage. To get them to buy into it, I'm going to talk to them more about um, the monetary benefits they're going to have, the achievements they're going to have. And there's white papers out there um, from Rally Now BA. Uh, there's also, um, trying to think of other, other data, you know, like, it's like, here's data from the last 20 years for 30,000 teams and, you know, that type of thing, where I can say, here's, here's what you're going to get, right? You're going to get improvement in quality. I'm not just saying it, here's the data, right? By doing these trainings, by doing these trainings, we're going to have faster time to market. And it's an average of this percent time to market. Here's the data if that makes sense, to get them to sign into it. The team level is probably usually more at the green stage. So I'll tell them like, hey, you know, you, you'll be able to collaborate better. You're going to have a more fun work environment. And they're like, yes, I want to take this class. <laughs> Does, I think so, but I want to let Ahmed get his, and he has his hand up. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. And I know like we're at time now, so I don't know oh. Um, uh, yeah, real, real quick on that, uh, we'll just go over time for folks that need to drop, feel free to drop. If you have a question and you have to drop, just drop it in the chat. We're going to keep the recording going. You can see it on YouTube afterwards. So, all right, take it away, Alma. 
Much appreciated. Thank you. So my question is around um, the conference. So yeah, my question is around the conversation of scaling agile, right? Um, and I know that th this is, um, uh, uh, I, I guess this might be an appropriate forum to bring this up because this is about scaling agile, right? But there's been a lot of, so I'm kind of new to, to this space in particular. And so bear with me here. Um, I'm just very oh. curious, right? Um, there's been a lot of conversation around maybe this idea that scaling agile doesn't really work in general because agile specifically was designed for small to medium sized software uh, teams, right? And so I was wondering, Kim, um, if you have any insights on that, what your perspective is um, on that uh, uh, line of thought, and um, I guess just how you would navigate um, those criticisms, right? I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, so the question is, they're saying Agile is not meant to be scaled. Is that is that what you're saying? Am I hearing you right? Well, so specifically, um, the argument is that Agile was designed for small to medium-sized software development teams, right? Um, and so I guess another way of looking at it, right, um, is um, uh, for many people who work in the space, right, the idea is that your boss wouldn't even need to know that you're using Agile in your team for as long as you're fulfilling all your obligations and whatnot, right? Um, so the, the, the argument is that this was designed sp to specifically um, shape and structure teams in particular, like as opposed to organizations as a whole, right? So yeah, I'm just curious um, what your thoughts are on that. Well, I mean, mm there's a lot of discussion in the, you know, agilist realm on these kinds of topics. So kudos to you for um, seeing that. And my answer is agile was not developed for teams. It was not developed for anything, right? The agile manifesto was written. Um, oh gosh. No, I'm forgetting. They came together. Uh, it was in Utah at it was a bunch of different folks who were doing very progressive things. And they said, let's kind of, and having high functioning, not only teams, but companies. So they were practicing it at, at all levels. Granted, they were smaller companies at the time. So agile is not the doing, it's the being. So I would suggest for them to look at the agile manifesto and the agile principles. That's what makes the change. And your leadership, all levels of the organization on all divisions. So you marketing, right? Legal, even I've worked with um, maintenance teams, right? All working from that perspective are benefiting the company. The reason why we have agile enterprise transformations now is understanding that just having the IT division doing agile doesn't work because now they're bumping up against impediments from the rest of the organization who's not functioning in this way. Do they have to do scrum? No, but being agile is important for all these organizations uh, to get, uh, get, get the most benefit out of it. That's where you're getting the you know, 100% um, increase in revenue over their competitors in a market that has been stable for decades, right? It, it's from those types of things. I would suggest, uh, and if you message me, I can find either my copy or the link for the white paper that has all the data. They probably would be interested in the data on what they can get from it. So you can, it's not just saying we get improved quality. It's here's the percentages that are shown. If you're really embracing the manifesto and the, and the 12 principles, um, whether you want to be scrum Kanban or something else agile, because there's many other agile things that's for the teams to choose. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely, sounds good. And I'll definitely uh, reach out to continue uh, this conversation. I think it's a, a very interesting one, uh, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. All right, who is the next it's one? Jeff is next. Okay. Kim, thank you so much for a, a wonderful presentation and condensing so much information into uh, your your slides the slides are just outstanding as well as your delivery thank you um so there are there are organizations that i consult with um 
who struggle in some ways with the combination of um, promoting and supporting successful collaboration and work done in teams while maintaining um, regard and, and use of, of individual um, inquiring, thinking, acting, learning, you know, sort of the autonomy side of well as well. And um, so they're, you know, they're looking to, to really, they want people to be inquisitive and inventive and all those things. And, and they want them to be able to work in teams. And I'm wondering um, how you can support the combination. Yeah, it's, well, Green Stage does have these things. It's what they're valuing more, right? So Green Stage does not value someone who's always being the hero because that person's not collaborating. That person's not sharing their knowledge and helping mentor the junior people on the team. And they know mentoring the junior people on the team or the mid-level people on the team is going to make the team better as a whole and more innovative and more productive. So I'm not. I, I agree with you completely, but, yeah. I, but I'm but I, but I'm just sharing that oh. there are there are very there, there are that I, I, I'm with organizations who are are definitely, you know, we're all we're all in this together. And, um, but what they really want to preserve is people's individual inventiveness and imagination and some, some amount of autonomy and even experimenting to really, you know, that it's, that it's not only all about teams, that it's about individuals as well. And, and it may seem paradoxical, but it does seem to me that that combination may be a powerful combination. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're meaning by preserving the autonomy because in green stage, right, it is relational focused. So we're taking everyone's insights, right? And like, oh, Kim had a great idea or Jeff had a great idea. Let's do that. And then everyone works together to make that idea happen. So you're having the autonomy for your ideas. You're having the and, and you're being given um, acknowledgement, right? As, as uh, an appreciation for that idea as well. So help me understand. Well, so maybe that's the way to frame it. You know, what they're trying to do is preserve independent thought and not just group thinking. So uh, because they see that, that often great breakthroughs are made um, through somebody really thinking independently, you know, um, outside of anything. And, and there are those kinds of, uh, you know, epiphanies, if you will. And so they're trying to preserve that individual creativity, as well as uh, really successful, supporting, investing in collaboration. And I, and I get it, and, and I'm not quite sure exactly how best to support it in a culture and process myself. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not sure G Green Stage does support independent ideas or people saying like, hey, I have this idea. Let me go see if I can flush it out a little bit. Does any, you know, it could be, does anyone want to work on it with me, not the whole team? And let's see if this is a potential path forward and we'll come back, right? That in in Agile, we'll call that a spike, right? We're gonna go research a little bit. So, so I'm wondering if it's a misunderstanding um, of, of the organization on what collaboration means. Yeah, it's okay. I, that's, that's, that's enough invested in it. I'm just saying that I'm really, I'm seeing this, this prizing, if you will, of independent thought along with treasuring and prizing of collaboration in order to help people really say, you know, we really want you to be creative. We really want you to be an independent thinker, you know, as well as being a collaborative thinker and somebody who can really maximize and, and uh, you know, uh, contribute to and, uh, and gain from the synchronicity of it. But, but I see both and, and uh, rather well, than sort of an either or orientation. And, and that's it's sort of what I'm trying or. to figure out. Yeah, thank you. So now I'm understanding your question. It's not either or. 
Right, at the green stage, it's incorporating the orange stage. So it's it's both. <laughs> and it's sounding like the organization you're working with is is more at a green stage of like, let's incorporate, incorporate, we're not only incorporating orange, but all the stages before that and moving forward, right? Whereas at an orange stage might not be um, as heavily focused on collaboration. It'd be like, just get the work done, whoever can do it and whoever can do it faster <laughs> is more of that mindset. Um, as they are evolving into green, it's not a light switch. So you might see some of, um, sometimes they care more about getting it done. Sometimes they care about more about collaborating. <laughs> that type of thing. But once once you're in green, you are incorporating the autonomy into that level. Terrific. Thanks. Hopefully that, hopefully that answers it. <laughs> so thanks, Jeff. Um, if you have more questions, just you know, DM me. So on LinkedIn yeah. or Twitter. Kara has her hand up. Okay. Kara. Hello, I love the presentation, the pedagogy, especially with the summary um, bumper stickers and the breakdown is really helpful in capturing like snapshots of what each group is focusing on. Um, I apologize for not having my camera on, I'm a little under the weather today. I had a question based on how explicit you are with the language of this framework. Based on things that you said earlier, it sounds like many companies don't necessarily want you holding that scorecard, but have you worked with companies that do explicitly want to create like a company language around the different colors in the framework who want to have some explicit conversations about how to move themselves from one group to the other? Yeah, so... Actually, it's more of the more green stage and 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 uh, teal stage, which is stage seven, that care about uh, that are focused on. I want to move from one stage to the other and be conscious and aware about it. Whereas the stages orange, uh, state uh, stage five and to stage one, is more just concerned about their stage. So talking stages to them would not be useful, but talking to them in a way they could understand so that they, right. Um, right involve agile with inspecting and adapting is going to help them evolve right um you just explain inspection and adaption from an orange stage perspective of we're going to have here's the here's the numbers of what we could potentially see of time to market and reduction in production level um critical bugs and right here's the revenue thing we can see as well so you're giving them actual data points um of why to try these different things, whether it's collaboration, whether it's scaling a certain way, um, having PI planning and for safe and things like that, uh, for safe scaling. Um, does, that, does that answer your question? I'm not sure. It, uh, it does. Um, I actually, it's kind of tied into a secondary question is when you are kind of in your head keeping track of kind of where groups are and how you're hoping they accept invitations to proceed. What is the evolutionary stage that you feel is the most challenging to move people between and the one that tends to be a smoother transition? Well, I never try to move them from orange to green. Um, I'm trying to meet them where they're at to take that next small step in growing and learning. Right, and usually it's through agile adoption. Um, I suppose, but let me try and rephrase. Um, do you find that there are specific stages where they are more receptive to those invitations? Um, uh, yes. So in, in green scene, they're more receptive because they they understand that not knowing is okay and that trying to learn and grow and know is okay. Whereas in or orange organizations, not knowing could lead to you admitting that you don't know something could lead to you being laid off, could lead to a poor performance appraisal, right? You saying, I don't know this, but I want to learn it is, is viewed more positively in the green Right, understanding that if you're acknowledging it, we can do something about it. Right, we can, yeah. we can fix yeah. it. We can send you to a class. You can do this. You can do that. Whereas in orange, um, trying to get orange team level folks being interested in training is challenging because in their 
in an orange organization, if you're going to training, it means you're lacking and you're less than and potentially a problem child, right? <laughs> right. Um, um, teams getting coaching in orange stage feel like you're getting coached because you're not doing a good job. So I have to really clarify that we're coaching everyone to help them learn these things we just learned in training. It doesn't, right? It doesn't mean that you're needing help. It's how can we make it better? So it's using words like that, like acknowledging that that's what, how they're seeing it and acknowledging it's it's the make better approach versus there's anything wrong with you. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate the insight into the mindset behind both sides. Yeah. You're welcome. I know it was quick, right? There's there's a lot of literature in integral and spiral dynamics you can research to the end of time, probably, uh, as well as Alalu's book is a nice start as well. Um, so, yeah. Well, anyway, thank yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you answered the one other question that I saw in the chat as Agile used in non-software industries. Is there anything you wanted to add to that? Um, thanks for that. Uh, well, I, I guess I would say, um, I've, I've personally helped with agile transformations in medical, in aerospace, in federal government and state governments, in banking, insurance, um, even working with, um, you know, like the, um, individual kiosks you have at the airport to check in and stuff like that, <laughs> working from a hardware and software perspective, I know people use it for building cars. Um, I believe Tesla uses some of this, um, Walmart, et cetera, uh, Costco um, as well. Uh, not only in their Costco warehouses, but I worked with Costco headquarters. Um, and uh, yeah, so it it's not the scrum or the Kanban, it's the agile values and principles that will, that will change the organization. And as uh, international coaches who are more important than me say, um, if you're not embracing delighting the customer, if you're not embracing empowering the teams to do great things, you will go out of business. It's not if, it's when. And larger corporations will have time to, have, have longer time to fail, right? And the why of it, is because of the internet and social media can make or break your company's um, reputation in the order of minutes versus it used to take years. And everyone knows who your competitor is and they'll jump to that competitor and it's almost impossible to get them back. Yeah, So good comment. And I would just add to that, that uh, across organizations, I've seen agile um, scale into HR operations, uh, executive assistant organizations, you know, just about any organization you think of can benefit from, as Kim said, the agile principle. So uh, it's widely applicable. Thank you, Ben. I was thinking more industries, but uh, yes, you know, HR, marketing, legal, um, there's actually an agile marketing meetup um, in Tennessee, in Nashville, and also internationally that I'm part of as well that are just marketing organizations. So um, yeah. definitely all, I, I might be forgetting some, but all aspects across the organization and then across industries. Yeah, like Ben was saying. Thank Excellent. You. Well, yeah, I think uh, it's about time to wrap up here. Um, so Kim, thank you for answering all those questions, staying over. Uh, I'll echo what Jeff said in the chat. Um, it was a fantastic presentation. We'll have the recording up on YouTube, I'd say by Monday at the latest. And um, yeah, again, Kim, uh, thanks for your time. And I know all of your information is on the meetup page. That's where I'll be posting the link to the YouTube recording. And uh, I think I've already got the PDF of the slides. So I'll uh, throw that up, a link to that there as well. And any final thoughts, Kim, before we adjourn? Mm, just to emphasize some more, between the stages is not either or, it's just what they're focusing on more. And the stage you're at is integrating, incorporating the, all the previous stages. Got it, excellent. 
Well, thanks again. And yeah, we'll wrap it up now in the meeting, but uh, thanks for the folks that stuck to the end and for those watching the recording. Um, hello in the future. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. See you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.